What's up, my name is Technumber here for Troubleshoot. In this video, I'll be showing you a pretty cool application that basically lets you keep a listen history across whatever platform you use. Google Play Music, YouTube Music, Spotify, Tidal, or anything like that, as well as a plethora of other programs. Of course, you'll know that on your listening platform of choice, you probably have a history somewhere, a liked playlist, but as soon as you move from one platform to another, like Spotify to Google Play or Google Play to Tidal, you won't be taking anything with you. Of course, while it is software to transfer playlists and etc. from one platform to another, your statistics will be completely lost. And something like Spotify, as far as I know, is one of the only platforms to send you a year-end sheet saying how much time you spend listening to music, what you listen to, your favorite genres, etc, etc. It'd be nice to have a centralized place that can do that. And that place is in fact Lost FM. You've probably heard of this platform, but if you're like me, you've never really looked into it. All you've seen is that people can scrobble music, whatever that means, and you can have your own profile on here. While you can listen to music on here through the YouTube player, if you don't understand what it is, well, we're gonna go through and learn in today's video. In a Reddit thread I came across yesterday, this was one of the profiles linked, and I think it's a good example. This person's listened to almost 400,000 songs, which are scrobbles, and scrolling down, you'll see some statistics. Top artists, top albums, top tracks, and you have weekly or monthly listening reports, even yearly listening reports. Simply clicking on his year report for 2019, you can see how many songs he listened to, how many songs per day, total listening time, albums, artists, tracks, loved tracks, when during the day, top tags, days in the week, discovery, longest streak, biggest day, events, followers, etc, etc. And these would be really nice statistics to have, especially if you have one centralized place for a whole bunch of different platforms. And well, that's exactly what Last FM provides. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set it up and get it to work with whatever music platform you'd like. In my case, I'll be using a title. Number one, head across to last.fm or click the link in the description down below. Then you'll have to click join in the top right or log in if you already have an account. I apparently already have one, so I'll try and remember my password. While unable to find one, I'll go ahead and make a new account. After creating an account, you'll be sent a verification email. You can of course close out of the recommendations over here as we're not really gonna be focusing on these. After verifying, we're done. Simply click continue to last FM and we're back to here. So I'll simply hover over the picture in the top right and then click settings to be taken across to our account setting page where we can set everything up. After setting up your account, if you're gonna be using Spotify, click the applications tab at the very end over here and you can go ahead and link your applications here. By doing this, you can track the music you listen to on Spotify from the desktop or mobile or any other device. If you'd like songs to play back from Last FM with a Spotify premium account, as soon as you hit play on the website, it'll start playing in your Spotify application. But for most other services, including YouTube, Google Play Music, Tidal, Deezer, SoundCloud, Mixcloud, Sonos, Hype Machine, Strax, Bandcamp, Pandora, and a whole bunch more, you'll be heading across to this download link, also linked below. If you listen to music using iTunes or Windows Media Player, we'll be downloading and installing the Last FM desktop scrambler. Simply click download for Windows. Scrolling down, you also have the Android app, iOS app, and you'll find more info on using these different services. The Spotify one is the only one with the ability to connect. So I'll simply click on the installer to open it up and we'll follow through with it. I agree, next, choose a location, next, next, and wait for it to install. Then I'll leave it as launch and click close. I'll simply click a login and it'll be taken across to our browser where we simply click yes, allow access. By doing this, native song players on our PC will now track to last.fm. As you can see, last.fm is open here. I can click on it and we have settings, enable scrubbling and view your last FM profile. Now you don't really need this application installed unless you listen to music using iTunes or Windows Media Player. I'll take both of them and I can leave it at that. If you're not gonna use iTunes or Windows Media Player to listen to songs, it's probably worth uninstalling this. If you'd like to scroll from other platforms, once again, head back to this download page, scroll down until you see this section and click more info under whatever platform you're gonna be using. I'll expand say YouTube and Tidal over here as that's what I have installed. I'll also expand SoundCloud as I sometimes listen there as well as Bandcamp. If we head across to these different tabs, you can see YouTube and music scrolling. Via the web, simply just install the web scrubbler extension for your browser of choice, whether it's Chrome or Firefox. I'll open up the Chrome one in a new tab and install it. For Android, you have the steps here and iOS. I'll simply click add to Chrome when we went across to the extensions page and this will also be linked in the description down below. Then we have title scrolling over here. Through the web player and desktop applications, all you have to do is set it up within the application itself 
or if you use a web browser to listen to music through Tidal, install one of the extensions. So I'll simply open up Tidal, head across to settings, scroll down, and we see connect to last.fm. After clicking it, we get sent to here, and I'll click yes, allow access. Then open Tidal, and scrolling down, you can see we're now connected to last.fm. Because we're listening to a song currently, if we have a look at my browser and head across to my profile, you'll see that I haven't listened to anything just yet. But if I skip the song, you can see it's now updated. Here's the song I was just listening to, and here's the song I'm listening to right now. Cool, so it's working exactly as we expect through the Tidal platform. Everything that you listen to on every platform will be listed here for you to come back and check whenever you want. Listening reports, weekly, monthly, and yearly reports are all listed here. Pretty cool. Closing out of Tidal for SoundCloud, simply install one of the extensions or follow these steps if you're on Android or iOS. And finally, Bandcamp is also just the extension. Most of the time, you'll need either the extension installed or you'll be signing in directly on the platform itself. Having a look back here for the Spotify option, all you have to do is connect your actual account to it and everything will be tracked automatically. Expanding more info, we see exactly what needs to happen here. If you listen through the desktop browser, you can of course install the extension and it'll work automatically. Otherwise, you can just connect it and it works straight away as the integration is quite tight. As far as I know, these are the only platforms, but if we click more ways to scroll at the very bottom, we'll find some more platforms that aren't officially supported, but there are ways to get them working. Such as VLC, it's built in and available under audio preferences. Plex is built in as well and a couple of other options here. Google Play Music does support it to some extent using the browser, but if you have the open source desktop project, you can link it there too. And I'm quite sure because the desktop project also supports the YouTube Music project, I think it should be able to link your YouTube listening habits to this automatically. And quickly expanding my plugins list, you can see Web Scrobbler over here. Web Scrobbler does not support this website, but if I click pin and pin it over here, you'll see the same. What we need to do is right click the plugin and then click options. After doing this, we'll expand accounts and click sign in under Last.fm. Then I'll click yes, allow access. Now that it's been granted, you can see that I'm signed in as Technobo. We can also link it to Libre.fm and ListenBrains. Options over here, we have some options for supported platforms, etc, etc. Contact to find a way to contact Last.fm developers for this plugin, FAQ, about and show some love. So let's go ahead and open up YouTube and search for a song. If I open up a song over here, you'll see the icon slowly changing in the top right as it searches and picks up the song that you're listening to. It's currently searching and it's green, which means that it's recognized. We can click on it to see some more info for it. However, if we listen to a song that isn't necessarily detected, i.e. it's too new or something like that, you'll see that the icon pops up as something that's red, a question mark or something else and after clicking it, you'll be prompted to input some information. I don't know if I'll be able to find one that shows this. Unfortunately not, but that's fine, as long as you know what to do. Heading back to my listen profile, refreshing, you can see that the songs that I listen to on YouTube and Tidal are all appearing here. And that's basically the entire point of this platform. I'm pretty sure that you have to listen to a song for a certain percentage for it to appear on this list, otherwise it won't appear at all. As I click through a couple of songs on YouTube and they're not appearing here. That's fine. So anyways, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you found something useful and it might have been taken over here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.